Oi, pessoal! Bom, tô aqui de novo para avisar que os nossos challenges e o nosso Sound School estão abertos lá no inglesdenicro.com. Tá valendo muito a pena e a gente quer agradecer muito a vocês que estão conosco nessa caminhada no nosso dia a dia e dar mais uma motivaçãozinha para vocês melhorarem cada vez o inglês de vocês. Bom, é, é isso. Eu acho que vocês vão ter que ir lá no inglesdenicro.com para dar uma olhada em tudo e qualquer dúvida já sabem. Suporte arroba o Cambly continua te oferecendo uma aula grátis lá no Cambly.com ou no aplicativo do Cambly com falantes nativos do inglês. Todos os professores que estão lá são falantes nativos da língua inglesa. Então, você que está querendo melhorar o vocabulário, melhorar a conversação, falar sobre business, falar sobre a sua área de atuação, fala, e treinar para uma entrevista de emprego, vai no Cambly.com ou no aplicativo do Cambly e coloca o nosso código em minutos grátis. O nosso código é Inglês de Necru Podcast. Vale muito a pena, todo mundo que fez curtiu e também os planos que eles oferecem é de acordo com o que você puder fazer e puder pagar. Então se você puder fazer, por exemplo, 15 minutos por semana, tem plano assim. 30 minutos duas vezes por semana, tem plano assim. Vai lá, dá uma fisticada, vale muito a pena. A gente não tá aqui falando todos os dias sobre isso para você se realmente a gente não acreditasse, tá bom? Now, on with the show! Hello, hello, hey, sweet people, and welcome to another episode of English no Cru Rádio. My name is Foster, and as always, I am here with... Alexia. Hello, Foster. How are you today? I am doing fantastically. Uh, that's an exaggeration. I'm doing okay. How are you doing? I'm doing okay as well. Awesome. So today, we are going to continue our conversation talking about homophones. And before we get started, can you give us a quick refresher about what homophones are? Well, the words that are the same pronunciation, but completely different meanings. Exactly. To keep it very simple, same pronunciation, different meaning. Yes. Cool. So yesterday we talked about the difference between your and your. And this was inspired by a guy on TikTok named Greg. Greg, um, Greg Hinthorn. Greg Hinthorn. I think it's like that. It's H-I-N-T-H-O-R-N. Greg Hinthorn. Thank you, Greg, for the inspiration. So today we're going to continue our conversation talking about some really common homophones. And today, Alexia, I wanted to focus on... Three words, there, there, there. There, there, there. Okay, so we have three different words here. First, we have there, T-H-E-R-E, -E, there. Like, so, I am th here, Alexia is there. Okay. Okay? We also have there of possession, which is T-H-E-I-R. Are there. It is their dog. It is not our dog. Right? Uh huh. And then finally, we have another contraction, which is the contraction of two words, they are. And in English, we contract these two T H E Y apostrophe R E. Okay. Okay. But they all sound the exact same. They all have the exact same pronunciation. There, there, there. There, there, there. Okay. Awesome. And with the TH. So there, there, there. Your tongue is outside your mouth. Yes. Your tongue is out of your mouth. You are biting your tongue. That is how you produce the TH sound. So Alexia, how do you feel about giving me some examples? Well, as you know already, I'm not good with examples, but I'll do my best. That's all I can ask for. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start with probably the most common usage of there, which is T-H-E-R-E. -E. 
Like, I am here in South Carolina. Alexia, you are there in Portugal. Okay. So, there are too many people in the world. No, this is not the one. Yeah. That is the contraction. Yeah. Uh, no. So, you're saying there are too yeah. many people in the world. Okay. That's an interesting statement. I also think about overpopulation from time to time. Can you give me another, perhaps more common example? Um, uh, okay. okay, let's do this. I hate doing this. <laughs> so, Alexia, give me an example with a dog. So, for example, here I am holding a very cute dog. There, the, what they there, the the dogs are running over there. Perfect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you could say something like, "Look at that really cute dog over there." Uh huh. Yeah, the dogs are playing in the dog park over there, like the other side of the street over there. Yes. So this can refer to location, like not here, but there. We also have the phrase, neither here nor there, uh, which yeah. means that's really not important or relevant to the conversation. Oh, it's neither here nor there. I mean, so why are we talking about that? <laughs> and we also use this version of there a lot when we are saying there is or there are. Like the first example you gave, there are too many people in the world. So, if you're translating this to Portuguese, you would say a or tang, right? Yeah. So, there is a party tomorrow night. There are a lot of protests happening in the U.S. right now. Yeah. Okay. So, is this first version of there, is that clear to you? Yes, we yes, We can be talking is. about location or we can be talking about there is, there are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So the second iteration of there is the possessive form of there. Why did you say the second one? Iteration. The second version. But iteration? Iteration. Iteration? Iteration. Yeah, it's like if you say to reiterate, like I cannot reiterate enough. That means I cannot repeat. To iterate is to do something. Yeah. Okay. Fancy new vocabulary word for you guys. Always learning a new thing. Okay. So let's try this, Alexia. I will give you an example, and then I want you to give me an example. And because we love dogs, we can stick to the theme of dogs. Okay. Uh, wait, which one are we doing now? T-H-E-I-R? Yes. Okay. There with possession. So, for example, my friend Jordan recently got a new dog with his wife, Emily. So I could say, their dog is super cute. Yeah, I could say as well, um, like, no, this would be the other example. Ah, if we are talking about a band, I could say, their songs are really, really good. Awesome. Yes, because you are thinking about... More than one person, and you are thinking about possession. So we have a band, which is a group of people playing music, and they have songs. So in this case, their songs are really good. Yeah. So a good way to really think about if you're using this form of their correctly, if you substitute their for our, so our songs are really good. That still makes sense, right? Right. Okay. So, there is for them, our, or ours is for us. Yeah. Okay. So, try to give me one more example. Oh, meu Deus. Um... Ah, meu Deus. Ah, meu Deus. Okay. Ah, so, meu Deus. My, my plants are loving the sunlight here in our living room. And I think okay, where is this one going? <laughs> and I think that one of them 
is going to give me a lot of flowers and their flowers are going to be beautiful. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is a classic example of making things more complicated than necessary. I, I'm a storyteller. I'm trying to, to okay. imagine. Let's imagine. Let's approach this in a different way. Think of two people. Give me two people. Okay. Bruno and João. Bruno. Bruna. Bruna. Bruna e João. Okay. So what is something that Bruna e João, what is something that they have? What is something they possess? <laughs> they have a beautiful boxer puppy. They, okay. Back to dogs. <laughs> so Bruna and João have a beautiful little baby boxer named Elton. 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 So try to use their with possession. Mm -hmm. Talking about so, Bruna and João. Their puppy has already 10 kilos. Okay. So in this case, you would say their puppy is kilos. Okay. Their puppy is already 10 kilos. Yes. Can you give me one more about Bruna and João? Their apartment is really, really spacious. I love it. Spacious. Nice. Mm -hmm. Good interior design word. Okay. <laughs> So, are we clear with the possessive use of their? Yes, we are. Okay, let's move on to the contraction. They are, so we are talking about T-H-E-Y apostrophe R-E. So, this, is, this one is the easiest one. They are having fun. They are eating a lot. They are changing, trying to change the world. They are amazing. Yeah, those are all great examples. Just one suggestion or observation, Alexia. It sounds like you're saying they are. So normally, just like with you are and your, normally we will use the contraction when we are speaking. So instead of saying they are, try to say they're. They are amazing. They're having fun. They're eating a lot. It's so hard. Uh, they're it, trying to change the world. Yeah, it is hard because your Brazilian brain really wants to see the letters and you're thinking they are. But as a native English speaker, we are simply thinking they're. Oh, yeah. They're going to the movies tonight. Mm -hmm. They're going to eat dinner. Yeah, I This think This is a great... It's a great thing to use when you're talking about the future. I think it's just practice because back to our traditional English school, um, they used to make us like, they are, they are, they are. Like you had to say everything to be completely correct, like grammar things and vocabulary and everything. So... Um, with the other two examples, it's just the way that you learn because you don't have the the contraction. Exactly. So can I give you a little bit of homework for the weekend? Yeah. Okay. So yesterday we talked about your and your, and today we talked about their, their, their. Mm -hmm. So with each word, I want you to think of 10 examples, write them down, Read them and pronounce them. So you could think, your dog is growing really fast. Your dinner is ready. And then you could think of, okay, you are. What are some versions of that? You're not feeling well today. You're going to the movies tomorrow. And you can do the same thing with all the versions of there. And this will really help you not only be more comfortable with the fact that, okay, All of these different words have the exact same pronunciation, but you will also develop a better sense or a better feeling of how to use each one in different contexts. Okie dokie. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, it does. And it's a good practice. Yes. Everything I recommend is good practice. Of course. You are our favorite English teacher. <laughs> okay. Okay. 
So let's end on a high note. I'm your favorite English teacher, and you're my favorite English student. Yay! <laughs> okay, Doki. So I will see you on the next episode. Yes, we will see you in the next episode. Oh my God! Bye. <laughs> bye bye. Obrigada por ter escutado mais um episódio aqui do Inglês no Cru Rádio. A gente tem muito, muito, muito que agradecer a vocês. E a forma da gente agradecer é oferecendo desconto. E a gente está lá oferecendo desconto nos nossos produtos que nós temos, que são os nossos cursos. Tanto os Challenges quanto o Sound School estão com desconto lá no inglesnicru.com. E a forma de você acessar é, claro, indo no inglesnicru.com e vendo o que a gente está oferecendo, né, gente? Então vai lá, que eu estou muito, muito feliz. A gente está muito feliz, claro, de poder estar tá reabrindo para vocês e poder fazer com que vocês melhorem cada vez mais o inglês de vocês e atinjam a melhor fluência, pronúncia, vocabulário, leitura, tudo, tudo, tudo possível, tá bom? Então é isso, inglesgenicro.com, hein?